In this video today, we're going to talk about an engineering decision making technique called pew charts. And pew charts are useful in the engineering design process when you have several initial concepts for some design and you would like some method to choose between them. So let's take this example here of your team has been tasked with redesigning a music player. And again, this team is someone from the mid 2000s, so everything looks like an iPod. But imagine that your team has come up with five different concepts. So we could say we have concept number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. So the team had been together for several weeks. They had done some initial research. They'd done some talking with their customer. They'd done some researching of standards. They'd benchmarked with some products. And now they've generated some concepts. And the team now has to decide which of the concepts should go forward, what elements of the concepts are good, and what elements of the concepts might need refinement. So if we look at concept number one, it looks like a traditional iPod player. It's got a USB connection. Number two looks a little bit like a Zune. Number three, because they're really worried about energy efficiency, is connected to a car battery. And number five over here looks like a little robot with a light. So everyone has been very passionate about their designs and has put a lot of time into them. How do you all as a team rationally and effectively come together to evaluate these different concepts and find out what is good about each of them? In engineering decision making, there are lots of ways that we can go about this process. First off, what you often see in a lot of movies is something called back of the envelope calculations. So this is where two really bright people are probably sitting at a restaurant or a bar and they're wondering, well, how much energy would it actually take to launch a colony of dogs to the moon? And they go and they take some sort of napkin and they do some math and they do some calculations and they go, aha, it is even possible. Another engine engineering decision-making process might be modeling. And so what a model is, is a, a mathematical representation of some system to figure out whether something is uh, possible. These models can again be mathematical, or if we're talking about physical quantities, they could be geometric. So if you are sketching on paper or sketching in SolidWorks, that might be a geometric model. And as we go forward, there are more sort of uh, rigorous and defined levels of engineering decision-making in terms of prototypes. Often, sometimes you have to see a concept to understand how effective it might be. You can go and interview your stakeholder, or you could often look at codes and standards to understand your ideas. But what we're going to focus on today is a technique uh, of comparative analysis that is pew charts. You have several ideas, you'd like to weigh the options between them and find out what elements of each might be best going forward. So in a pew chart, the system is very simple in that we are doing a pairwise comparison between some known concept and all of our other concepts. And when we're evaluating our concepts, it's a very simple system of either that has a that concept has a positive aspect, and so we'll give it a plus one. That concept has a negative aspect, and so we'll give it a minus one, or it's just kind of neutral and we'll give it sort of a zero aspect. And so in this evaluation, we're not making very rigorous determinations. We're not doing tons of calculations. And we're not spending a lot of time on this assessment. We're simply just saying good, better, worse, about the same. This is very first order analysis. And this is really used as sort of a first pass on your concept selection. A key component of a pew chart is that every design is compared to some datum. And a datum is just sort of a fancy word to say that this is the object we're all comparing against. Maybe there's a product in the market that is the best for your particular solution and you're comparing against it. Maybe the datum was your previous prototype and now you're comparing new iterations against it. The simple concept is that the datum is the thing that all of your other concepts get compared to. So part one of Pew Charts is that you're doing a pairwise comparison of all of your concepts to a datum. Part two of a pew chart is that you have to pick the things that you're going to evaluate all of these concepts on. And all of your concepts should have rational criteria that you use to evaluate each one. And these criteria should come from your design requirements. 
And as you'll see in 231, that design requirements can come from lots of areas. They can come, again, from codes and standards. They can come from manufacturability. So can you actually make something? But mainly they come from your user or your stakeholder. What is it they, that they actually want to do? So when you're picking all the things you're evaluating your concepts on, make sure they come from good requirements and that your requirements can be justified in relationship to your design. Overall, the important point about a pew chart is that it is not to get you to a final product or, I, or an idea. It is to cut down the set of really large ideas and finds the ones that are reasonable. So a pew chart would not be suitable for saying, well, we did a pew chart, this is our final design, this is the only one we're going for. But if you've got 10 initial designs, it would be useful to say, hmm, two of these designs started really high in the pew chart, and these three designs did really poorly. Let's discard the three low ones and pick the two higher ones and see if we can iterate on those designs. In laying this out, this is sort of the format of a pew chart. And so across the top up here, we're gonna have our different concepts. And so for the sake of argument, let's say that I picked a square, a triangle, a circle, a star, and then I'll attempt a 3D box as our last concept. Now, across all these concepts, we want one of these to be our datum. So this object right here as our square is going to be our datum, which means all of our other concepts, the triangle, the circle, the star, and the box, are getting compared against the datum. And the manner in which we compare them is through our criteria over here. And so for our criteria, maybe something we compare against is area, or another one might be cost in terms of making the object. Um, another one might be in terms of usability for whatever our concepts are. And what we do is, is we compare all of these concepts relative to the datum using our criteria. And since our datum is sort of our base level, it gets a score of zero for each of these things because it's our base object. And then what we do is, is we go to each of the concepts and compare that concept against our datum. So if I come to the triangle here and I say, hmm, how is the triangle relative to the square in terms of area? And so maybe it's got a smaller area, and so that's a negative aspect in this design. But then again, maybe it is cheaper to make or cheaper to use, and so we'll give it a plus one. And then in terms of usability, maybe it's much, much more usable than the square, and so we'll give it a plus one. And so once we've evaluated this concept, we can say that the triangle has two positive aspects and one negative aspect for a total score of plus one. Now, let's say we come here to the circle and we say, oh, this is much more efficient for area. It's better for cost and it's way more usable in the things that we want to do. And so our circle concept gets a score of three and it has no negative aspects to it, so it has a three positive score. And if we go on and on, we would evaluate each of these concepts relative to the datum, and we would come up with a set of rankings. And so for our star concept, it had uh, one neutral aspect, but no positive aspects, so that would have a score of negative two. And then for our box over here, it had one positive, two negative, so a score of negative one. Now, again, all of these comparisons are relative to the datum. So this does not mean that the circle concept is three times as better as the triangle concept, or sort of like six times as better than the star concept, but mainly it's to help you understand what is the relative improvement between these concepts. So in your design, you might want to look at what's so really good about this one with a positive three and keep aspects of those designs. And at the same time, you might want to analyze the star concept and say, hmm, there are some things in here that really didn't work. What might we take away from this as lessons of not to do? Again, something having a plus one or a plus three doesn't mean that that's absolutely 100% the best, 
but it's mainly a guide to help you understand which of the concepts might be better going forward. So let's return to our examples of our music players and look at the uh, five concepts that were generated. To start with, this one right here is going to be our datum because it's in the initial position. And we're going to compare against our other concepts, A, B, C, and D. And in this example, what we have done is already created a set of criteria that are based upon the performance of this system. And the criteria we've developed are ease of operation, portability, the amount of storage space. And these criteria, again, should be coming from our design requirements, which should be coming from our user and codes and research and all that hard background work that we did before even starting our design. So as we look at this, we're gonna take our datum concept and go ahead and fill it in with zeros because that's our base concept. Now we're going to evaluate all of our different concepts relative to the datum. So again, we'll have our concepts A, B, C, and D. And for A here, based on our evaluation, it had two positive aspects and one negative aspect, so for a total score of plus one. For our B concept here, it actually had no positive aspects, again, relative to the datum, and five negative aspects, so for a final score of negative five. For concept C, there were three positive and two negative for a score of plus one. And for concept D, there were really, again, no positive aspects of this, but then six negative aspects relative to the datum. So after you've done this piecewise comparison, you might say to yourself, all right, well, concepts A and C look like they have good bits to them. I wonder what is so useful in those designs that we might take going forward. So if you were to look here, both of these designs score highly in terms of durability. Maybe there is some insight in those concepts related to durability that you can extract and use going forward. Additionally, concept C seem to have more portability and possibly there's a feature there that is useful. And both concepts were really uh, useful in terms of battery life. Again, the point here is not to say that concepts A and C, because they have the same score, need to fight some tiebreaker for the end of the universe, but it's more to say that within these concepts, those both rated highly, and because they both rated highly, there are probably elements of those designs that are very positive. At the same time, concepts B and D did not rank very highly, and so there might be ideas within those designs that we should not use going forward. Overall, here are some hints for selecting good criteria for your designs. First, the criteria should be applicable to everything in the matrix. There's no sense in comparing different music players and asking them how well they can dance, and there's no sense in having robots that can clean your house asking them how well they can do your math homework. So all of your criteria should be applicable to the designs at hand. All of your criteria should also be relative. You should be able to give it a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or a neutral. It's difficult sometimes to ask perceptive questions in terms of which one's more beautiful or which one would someone like more. You need to be able to have criteria that you can objectively evaluate to understand which things would be best. Finally, you can think of your criteria as a question in terms of something that you can interrogate about your design. Instead of saying cost in terms of absolute dollars, you would rather think of it as, is this high cost, low cost, or medium cost? And all of your criteria can be thought of as a question. And again, your criteria should be justifiable in the sense that they came from some research that you have conducted. Either it was research with the user, it was some papers you read, it was some news articles, it was some market research, it was from codes and standards. Every criteria that you select should be justifiable in the context of your design. In summary, all good design is a set of trade-offs. Any 
task that you go into is going to have pluses and minuses, and you need to weigh those decisions. Engineers need structured and rational methods to help them select between concepts. Often we can feel very passionate about our ideas, and so it is helpful to disassociate our, our personal opinions from the concepts and to evaluate them in a rational method. The criteria you should select should be grounded in the user's needs in concepts like manufacturability and usability, these high level objective sort of things that in indicate a good design. Finally, this pew chart is not meant to be an end all be all for all of your decisions. Leave room for your own insights and intuitions. If one design is one point higher than another, that doesn't mean it's necessarily infinitely better. There might be elements of both designs that you can extract to make an even better design. This is a method for you to help understand what elements are good or bad about concepts and not a high stakes winner take all concepts. Leave room for your own ability and your own intuitions in going forward with your designs and understanding what is best in all of them.